All right, welcome everyone again to another session. This is going to be the last session for today. And um, today, this, this particular session is going to be handled by AKA. All right, so but um, AKA will be talking to us about how you can get started with contributing to Maltic. Hi, Heike. Hey, Toby. Good to see you. How was the day so far? Good, 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 good. Nice to connect with you again at the Multicon, although we do we do meet every one and then on our leadership team. All right, so AK is a marketer by education and I'm also is an infrastructure and security specialist in the early days, but now is focused on providing smart technical solutions for smart digital marketing. He's also an open source contributor for almost 20 years. I can attest to that. He has been an active contributor to Mautic. And um, this conference, he has been a major role. He has played a major role at this conference. So AK is also the founder of the Shafia Digital Marketing, and uh, where they give professional services and support to Mautic users and Mautic agencies around the world. Let me also add that AK is also the, the community lead for Mautic. All right, AK, good to have you here this afternoon. So this is going to be an interesting topic, talking about how people can be able to contribute to Mautic, which is something that is very, very necessary. All right, so um, AK, it's up to you now. Okay, thanks, Toby. Um, as I, as I, as you, as you mentioned, oh, let me share the screen. Just, uh, uh, there we go. Yeah, as Toby just mentioned, uh, I am not a developer. That's to be first. Yes, I did a lot of development, tiny little, little bits and pieces in the past, so I have a strong technical background, which is helpful, but I'm not a developer, and still I consider myself a really enthusiastic contributor to open source. And this talk is not has nothing to do with uh, agency or anything. This is really in my role as the team lead for a community. And why I am the team lead for a community in the Mautic open source project, that's because I think this is the, the root of Mautic's success. Um, I am very enthusiastic about building great products, about marketing Mautic, about good documentation and everything. But if we don't uh, inspire enough contribution uh, for all these disciplines, then it's not going to happen. Eventually, if you're large enough, there's a snow snowball avalanche effect, uh, and you don't have to care too much. You only have to set the boundaries right. But at our stage, we really need to focus on getting people on board and making getting on board really easy for everybody who is willing to get on board. And uh, what that means uh, is the topic of this case, uh, today's um, overview. It's really not more than an overview because contribution is such a wide area of things. Um, so let's start at the beginning. Um, who is the one to contribute? And that's the first divider I really considered do, making a little game uh, out of this with, with uh, go left, go right, take this, take that, whatever. Here's a, a card, here's the dice. Uh, OK, I took the short shortcut and said, OK, let's start by dividing between individuals and companies. Why would individuals contribute? How would they contribute? Why would companies uh, contribute? How could they do that? And so on and so forth. Um, so first, individuals and the why. Um, it's a ton of things. This is a really long list. Um, if you are already in the Mautic universe, in the open source universe, you may have an idea of this. But I think um, pondering this for a minute makes it really clear that it's a wide range of good things that you get out of this. To me. The last one is a crucial one. If it's not fun, I am not going to contribute, uh, at least in the long run, and uh, nobody else will. Well, maybe some, but but to me personally, it has to be fun or I'm gone. Um, 
The other thing, once you start doing things, it doesn't have to be coding, but once you have to start explaining more to others, writing a tutorial, um, testing new features, etc., that's a point where you need, really need to go deep and uh, start understanding modding, modding really on a fundamental level. And on top of that, you interact with people um, who are in the same situation, uh, may, may have much more seniority, or may have beginner's question for you, etc. But you have that sort of interaction that helps you um, picking up speed, uh, asking the right questions, finding the right answers much more quickly than you would if you just did, did a Google search. Um, at the same time, by contributing to Mordic, you really make a little dent in history. You sh shape the future of Mordic, maybe even in your best interest, just because you think, or for your own projects and clients, you think this would be a good development, or uh, because it's just needed and it's your chance to make a difference and then do something good that will there be there for a long time to be and you can probably say, oh, wow, well, this thing is mine or this thing is uh, what, what I contributed to. So yeah, may sound trivial, but, but to many, this is indeed a big part of the motivation. Um, yeah, this next thing, be part of a community. I already mentioned that. That is not like an esoterical thing. This is really having peers that you would not have otherwise. If you buy a product, you can ask the support of the uh, provider or, or vendor. Um, if you use an open source product without being uh, part of the open source community, yeah, you may get in touch with a professional agency and they can deliver that support to you. That's possible. But in general, that's one of the great things in open source that you can network with others, uh, that you will always find people uh, in the same situation or able to help you or at least listening to your questions. Of course, it helps when you know where to ask, how to ask, who to ask, etc. And that's the, 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 the learning curve and, and that's what you gain by getting closer uh, to the community and not just being one-off. Um, if you are actively using Mordic, maybe even, even building a business on Mordic, then of course it is in your personal interest to have Mordic successful and to, uh, make it as good and sustainable as possible because your success, individual success is built on, on that success of Mordic. And the same applies to companies as well, by the way. Yeah, um, I can only repeat, it's fun is a big part of the puzzle whenever, not only myself, but, but whenever a colleague of mine comes back from, from any sort of event, uh, be it an online event or a Mordic sprint or an, uh, in, an in-person conference on Mordic, that person is always, ex with no exception, full of energy, full of enthusiasm, also full of new ideas and inspiration and then knowledge, et cetera, but, but really enthusiastic about this whole thing and, and uh, uh, understanding the cause much better and, and being recharged. That's the big deal. Um, yeah, okay, that, I don't wanna write that to death, but I think it's, it's, it's tremendous, even if you are a real senior in the modding world. Now, um, as opposed to the modding professional, the, the multi-year senior, uh, even for students who have never heard of Mordic or for um, juniors in their jobs, uh, Mordic and open source in general is a fantastic um, opportunity to get started, uh, to get that first piece of experience that companies out there are seeking. Um, here in Hanover, we have a really nice um, program for for refugees from from other countries, and um, given that they 
have some some basic skills. Uh, there's a one year course um, to enable people to do web development. That's at a university. It's not it's not university, but it's organized by university. And for those, they all have this issue when they come to a company uh, with a resume uh, that doesn't look good. It's it's just yeah, they did something somewhere we don't know how it is in that country. And here, yeah, they spent some hours in so, in a sort of course, uh, but we really don't know. We ah, we rather not even talk to them. Yeah, you can call that ignorant and stupid, and it certainly is. But but the other flavor of that would be yeah, they they are doing that course, uh, cor course course, <laughs> um, but at the same time they start getting in touch with an open source project like Mordic. They may even uh, work as, as a student in a company or do open source contribution or uh, what I, uh, maybe support a conference, have a talk or add the, the, the design for a company or, or for, for a conference like this Mordic conference um, or do anything really. Um, and then do the next thing and the next thing. And pretty soon they will have a real good name in that open space, uh, open source space. Um, and may well be that, that they find their next employer right there. And if not, and if nothing else, they will have a much, much better resume. They will have testimonials, but, but they will also have their, I don't know, their events that they attended, the YouTube talks, uh, the YouTube videos of their talks, their GitHub repositories, you name it. Um, and that really makes a difference. At that point, companies will love you. And so if you are in that position, get active now. Um, it's the perfect combination between learning, fun, and uh, job opportunity in the future. So yeah, there you have it. Um, by the way, even here in Germany, people do not necessarily feel confident in speaking English. And that's not because they hate it, that's just because they don't have the opportunity to practice their English. And um, so that's another thing that you can get from participating in a project like Mordic. You have talks like this, you have maybe online calls or, or Slack conversations or whatever, maybe just Facebook uh, question and answers, but, but you can start by reading next, writing, replying to people, asking your own questions eventually, and then uh, get going and get, get speaking, talking. Even I, I, I'm not born English, uh, you probably hear that. Um, it took me a long time to, to get closer to the English language and to, to build the repertoire that I might have today. Um, but you need to start somewhere and the, the sooner you have that opportunity, the better it is. So a lot of pros, a lot of whys, uh, why you would be part of Modic. Now, um, little additional aspects here, one is, where do you do that? Do you do that on your own? Um, or do, do you do that in your own country or whatever, your own language? Or do you join a global part of the Modic project? That's a little um, distinguishing thing that I'll reflect on in a minute. So just keep in mind that you may do things on your own, uh, say, publishing a tutorial, or whatever. You may be part of a regional local thing, or you may be part of a global global thing. And then the other dimension here is the who. Many people think, uh, yeah, contribution, obviously that's coding, that's developers, that's not me. Um, but it's also everybody else. It's, I mean, the minute you look at Mordic or you read about Mordic, et cetera, you are, by definition, part of the community. Um, contribution in terms of being an active member of the community is as just as open. You can be an active member in many ways if you are 
not familiar with PHP or JavaScript or HTML at all. You can use it as a, an integrator, as a marketeer, as a designer, a copywriter, or anything else. We have people in the community who are good at Google Ads, and that's very helpful. We have people in the community who are good at uh, hosting, and that's tremendously helpful. So whatever your, your profession is and your background is, there's definitely going to be a spot for you in the Mordic community. And I can only invite you to, for, for instance, contact me maybe today or tomorrow, right here in the event, um, and find out the sweet spot just for you. OK, now. Um, there are differences. If you are not a developer and you don't want to be one, then probably this first column is not for you. Um, the title here is called one-off contribution, as in you can do this one time and then yeah, turn around and do your thing. And it's already a contribution, obviously. Um, and PR, uh, that stands for pull requests, is basically submitting a piece of code to the Mautic software, to the core software. So PR is, is pull request, is, is co submitting code. Um, so that's obviously something that might be a bug fix. It might be a feature, something that goes to the Mautic core. Um, the other option would be to provide some code outside of the Mautic, Mautic core. That's uh, another keyword here is repository or repo. Um, if you have a feature that is a plugin to Modic, uh, by all means, do publish that plugin in, well, ideally as a GitHub repository. There are other ways, uh, but they are uh, not quite as helpful. Um, maybe even if you publish it, it and it belongs to the core, may, maybe there may be a good route to get that into the core. Um, what else? As a developer, it's always good to have developers reviewing other people's pull requests. So you will just want to give it a try and see what other people do. Pick a pull request, look at the code, or maybe test the feature, and give a review, maybe even a code review on that pull request. That's a big topic, by the way, uh, for integrator. That's number two here. It's also test PR. It's also, it should be bold and red and blinking because that is the one biggest inhibitor in the Modic software uh, that we get more code contribution than we can actually do the quality assurance for. And we had the discussion earlier today that people still don't know what it means and uh, what, what the steps are to take. Um, pretty much twofold. Um, first of all, obviously, you have to go to GitHub, and we'll talk about GitHub in a minute. Um, and in GitHub, um, there are many, many pull requests that are open. And if you want to test one, you pretty much pick one that you feel able to test, um, and then you do the testing. So doing the testing is not as hard as long as you know what you're doing. I mean, if you know the domain, the te testing technology is really <laughs> incredibly easy these days. It's, it's all there for you. You just hit, you have to hit the button. It is going to install that feature for you in an, in an online instance of Mordic, and then you can go ahead and test. The much, much bigger issue is find the right issue for you, or the right PR, rather. Uh, if you are not using Salesforce, then probably it's going to be hard for you to test the Salesforce integration update. If you are not using this or that, uh, or if you are not a developer, then you are probably not able to test the developer-facing feature. But there are many, many end-user-facing features that pretty much everybody should be able to test. So if there's a bug fix or a new feature for campaigns or for email builder or you have it, you name it, 
um, then pick that one and try to test it and then leave a review. Say, okay, this worked like charm for me or uh, I don't understand it or it just didn't work. Um, and if more and more people do that, then the product team will be able to release many more uh, bug fixes and features in the upcoming Modic versions. So far, that testing thing is a real bottleneck. Okay, enough of that. Uh, I still think it's it's the number one priority, but uh, also it's not really fun. So it's something that everybody, everybody, everybody should be doing on a regular basis, uh, but few people do it uh, more than 10, 10 tests per week on, a, on an ongoing basis. We do that, by the way, for with our juniors and even, even apprentices um, to make that mandatory for them for a while to do this PR testing. And maybe you can do the same uh, because it helps people understand more, more dig, it helps people understand GitHub and, and all those things. And it helps Modic. So what else? Um, as an integ integrator, you should, for instance, be able to do proper bug reports. That's important. Um, of course, you should be able to do that as a developer as well. But as an integrator, even if you're not a developer, not uh, nothing to do with PHP, um, you run into a problem. First thing, what do you do? Oh, not a bug report, wrong. You do the research. You look at, ideally, at, at, ideally at GitHub. Uh, if you can't do that, uh, then you may turn to the forums. But yeah, best practice, go to GitHub, search in the issues, maybe even Google will find those, um, and see if the same bug has been reported before. If so, uh, still report or add to that report. Maybe there's uh, some some information that's not yet in there, or there's some there's a feeling that nobody else has the same problem, etc. So your input is valuable. Go there and just add your two cents to the bug report. Um, now again, this bug report is called an issue in, in GitHub. Um, if this issue does not yet exist or you can't find it, then it's uh, up to you to create one. And uh, that's easier than it sounds. Basically, um, it's going to ask you a couple of questions and then you can describe your problem and hopefully somebody will back to you, come back to you with additional questions if necessary or if not if, uh, with next steps. So create the issue. Don't just sit there and think, oh my God, Mordic is so stupid. It is going to stay stupid forever if nobody takes action. So be the one to take action, help making Mordic, be uh, making Mordic better. Okay, so uh, integrator, what else can you do? A ton of things, of course. As an integ integrator, you're the perfect person to write tutorials or to create video tutorials on setting up Mordic or on, on solving technical problems in Mordic. Um, in others, of course, you can write tutorials as well. Um, so we have this write column that's called all that applies to everybody. A marketer could be good at writing tutorials. Even a designer could do that. Like, uh, hey, here's, to, here's how to beautify Mordic focus items or whatever. Um, and of course, everybody should be talking about Mordic. Spread the word is one of the most important things in social media, in blog posts, uh, in your local newspaper, <laughs> whatever you like. Um, then one last but, but not so tiny thing is improved documentation. Um, we have many places uh, where, document, where official documentation is maintained. For instance, we have the developer documentation with the user documentation, we have the community uh, documentation, we have the knowledge base. Um, finding your way around those is hard enough already, um, and maybe the navigation will be improved over time, but the content of those places 
should also be up to date. It should be not wrong. It should be not um, missing important pieces. Uh, it should be understandable. Uh, in, a, in an ideal world, it would be, even be translated. We come to translation in a bit. But improved documentation, we're here talking about the one-off. Um, that is something that, that can be done uh, once or on an ongoing basis. OK, let's speed up a little bit. Um, if you don't want to be on your own, but still want to do, uh, don't commit in the wrong run, what about uh, doing a local Mordic event, uh, inviting others, etc.? And of course, um, in your local language, um, support in local language is very important in many countries, like all those countries where English is not so strong. Um, there are those islands uh, in the forums, in Facebook, or wherever, uh, where Mordic questions are answered. And giving answers there is the next step after reading. So read the research there, but, but become active if you're not yet. And on the global area, if you have tutorials, please share them. Uh, do answer questions in forums in English. And you can always go to any of our teams and ask them for one-time jobs. Um, for instance, in the community team, we had a lot of jobs for create or preparing the Modic conference, but also the product team, etc. cetera. Um, maybe the education team can, can help with a certain specific, or can need help, um, will need help with a specific task there. So go to this task. And here, at the, for the first time, we are looking at this hashtag, T hyphen something. Um, that is short for the teams, uh, for, for the channels that we have in Slack, which is our chat channel. Um, and we get to Slack as well. Or join a sprint, uh, that's also a good, first one to say, OK, I have not been a contributor so far, but I'd like to join a sprint. Um, and we'll see what comes next. OK, real quick, ongoing. Um, as a developer, if you publish a repository, it's, it's a good practice to maintain that one. Uh, and everything we did, say, before doing that on a regular basis is, of course, really fantastic. Um, on top of that, Mm, translating Mordic more, more should be an ongoing thing. Um, do meetups, do, do support the global teams on an ongoing basis. OK. Um, hmm. Question here, what is the most impactful way for, for the user you know, who never contributed could give something back to Mordic? Uh, that really depends on your skills. Um, uh, let's delay that for a second, but but um, I really need to make sure we stay on, on time here. Um, yeah, join the teams real quick. We have those five, five teams that are given here. We also have other things. The initiatives are uh, for a limited time period and are trying to achieve a large goal. Like, A, we want to finalize composerization, we want to bring them the, the marketplace online, we want to overhaul the Mautic builder, etc. cetera. Um, so those are good teams to join. And then there are the Tiger teams, um, which are not only for, uh, for a limited time period, but ongoing, but therefore for a really small piece of the product where you basically have the expertise for a domain, uh, not only in a technical way, but, but in, a, in a holistic way. You know the user use cases, you know, you know the market, you need the, you know, the legal stuff, you know the documentation and all. That's Tiger Teams. Um, yeah, period. Uh, what do we need? Uh, we can really just mention this, not go deeper, sorry. Uh, Modic.org account the modic.org slash Slack account and the GitHub account. Those are the three things that you could should have today. If you don't have them today, go there, create that. Yes, even if you are not a developer because you 
do want to be able to do a bug report, etc. Um, and then there's another thing: the, the more to contribute agreement to Google for that, that'll, that'll come up as well, and we will need that uh, if you want to uh, provide any sort of code or anything like that. Even for integrators, by the way, the other prerequisite is do it. So um, once you have set that up, pick your weapon, do the first thing and get going. So don't wait, do it. Um, do it, there are also are don'ts real quick. Um, issue reports should really only be in uh, GitHub. If you can't do that, uh, use the forums. Please do not use Facebook for issue reports, bug reports, complaints like that. Nobody will take care of those. And Slack, we did mention that as our chat uh, thing, that is also not for uh, long-term information. Um, so no support requests or anything in Slack is just for um, short-term communication and uh, things like that. Um, the other thing is if you have a bug report that is security relevant, please also don't report that in the, in a GitHub issue. Uh, and when you go to an issue, uh, GitHub issue, it will also tell you about that and where to go instead. Um, yeah, I know that many Facebook or some Facebook groups are still active, and it's okay to answer questions there. Even better would be to point people to the right places, uh, read the forums and uh, answer that question there. Okay, real quick, companies, uh, why would they um, contribute? Same mechanics as everywhere else in open source. Um, it's good for the skills of your company. It's good for the reputation of your company. It's good for your employees. For, and, and that is really the resource number one these days. If you want motivated employees uh, with, with opportunities that you would not have Otherwise, like uh, do international collaboration or speak English a lot or do some travel. Um, if th that's valuable to your people and you, you don't have that otherwise, then, then an open source project like Mordic is providing that for you. Um, on the other end, if you're not an agency or a Mordic service provider, why would you then um, um, support Mordic. Basically, for me, the number one would be be future proof. Make sure Mordic is a success. Be sure the plugin that, that a company or somebody built for you will be compatible to uh, the next Mordic version, etc. Um, have the means to, to get a problem fixed, etc. And, and also for if you're just just a user company, um, you also have the same things. You want the skills, you want the motivated employees, you want to be close to the product and not just a user uh, with no relationship to the product. Huh. Here's a long list what you could do as a company. Um, I want to make it simple. One is um, learn from Mordic or if, if your things or if your processes are better that, that, than what we do in, in Mordic, start the discussion and start improving Mordic. Um, typical examples would be use, Git, use GitHub, use GitHub uh, the right way in, in with issues and PRs and maybe even uh, with, with pipelines and then tests and then uh, requirements, et cetera. Um, and by all means, make it a habit to do public bug reports and public bug fixes. Don't do, do things like that private. It's no good. Um, of course, as a company, the other thing, give your, your employees the clear signal that you encourage individual uh, contribution. All the th those things that we discussed before that takes dedicated in individuals. It cannot be just dictated by a company, and that's what you want. Financial support is a big one uh, because we do need money, and uh, that's basically through sponsorship for events like this. 
or um, the easiest thing is ongoing sponsorship through GitHub or through Open Collective. Uh, you can even go there and fund things specifically if you say, okay, this initiative is important to us. But the most simple thing is to go there and uh, to go there and say, okay, a hundred bucks a month is nothing for my company, but for what it, it makes a big difference if many companies do that. Um, then publish code, as we said before, and uh, encourage your clients to do the same. Um, as a company, what are the, the first steps? What you can do today is go to Open Collective and become a sponsor today. The other thing is schedule a meeting with your team and discuss how close you are to the GitHub standards that we have with Mordic. Um, and at the same time, discuss with them this, their uh, thoughts towards contribution. Are they aware of that? Do, do they know how? Uh, would they like to do that? Or, or where are they? Maybe there's some, some education needed. And in that case, we will uh, take this first step, this, this getting started uh, talk um, into next phases. And um, that will be pretty easy uh, guidelines and then flowcharts, etc. And of course, those are also very uh, much deeper than what we can do here. Here's a list of, of uh, resources um, and you can download the PDF after the fact. It will be shared um, in the Mordic conference. Um, those are the pieces of written documentation that we have. Like for instance, contributing to Mordic is a big piece on contributing to the global teams. And uh, it's part of the con contrib contribution hand or community handbook, contributemodic.org. There's a lot more good stuff in that community handbook. Um, the, the second one is about feature ideas and, and requests. The next is about some of the places for documentation. Then all of those have their own how to's on uh, fixing or enhancing the documentation. And then there's one thing that I would like to talk, uh, point you to that is a uh, talk from today from our friend, from our friend Vane, um, who did a nice talk about getting started with Git. There are a ton of resources on learning Git and learning GitHub in those slides. So go ahead, look at those slides and yeah, look at the video once they are on YouTube. Whew, um, that's pretty much it. Now, I think we finally have time for questions. Hi, AK. Thank you so much for that wonderful session. Um, it was really, really um, um, a, a, um, a nice one to be able to know um, what you can be able to do to contribute to the multi community. But notwithstanding, um, there was a question that was supposed to come at the end of the presentation from Ruth. I thought you were about finishing. I was asking a question. That's why I pushed it up the other time. Um, yeah. So sorry about that. Do you still want to answer that question? Or is it fine with the answer you gave the other time? Hmm. I've been thinking about this question. I mean, just to repeat the question, it, it was about the most impact, impact oh, there it is, the most impactful way uh, for a person to do one contribution. Mm. To me, the best impact is, of course, ongoing contribution. So if you just want to do one thing, oh, that's pretty tough, frankly. Um, the, the most meaningful or the most impactful is ongoing contribution. And to do the first step towards that thing, that again, depends on what your role is and what you would like to do. Um, there's a tendency to say, okay, where, where is the pressure the highest? To just do three uh, pull request tests there will probably be no fun and will just be frustrating and be 
uh, Forgotten Tomorrow. Mm, to, to help out the community team with the next Morty conference, yeah, I mean, we, we always appreciate that, but, but um, certainly the education team feel, will feel other, uh, differently. So no, I can't really answer that, sorry. I, I would All be right. curious to learn what, sorry, I would be curious to learn what, what Ruth thinks about that because she asked the question. Ruth, if you are interested in coming off stage, I can invite you if that is fine. Okay, all right. So um, quickly, let me ask you one more question. Okay, so the question um, is about if um, someone wants to contribute and the person is not a native English speaker, um, what do you think such a person can be able to do? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's another tr tricky one. Um, the, I mean, there, there's there's a simple answer, and that is do things in your local language. If you are in a very large local Mordic community, like in Brazil or Japan or I don't know, the US or or even Germany, then that's easy. Um, if you are not in a mature local community, I don't have a good example, but but if, if there's a country or a language, there's no 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 visible Maori community there, then it's even more important to say, okay, um, I'm the one who starts that, who who um, finds out who else is doing Maori in my region, and who starts publishing things in my language, etc., and laying laying that groundwork. So. That is really easy, it has nothing to do with English, except, of course, as a Mordic user, you need a certain level of uh, understanding English. Um, as a developer, for instance, it's a different thing. Or if you, want, if you are beyond the local community and you want to make an impact on the global level, then um, we are actually preparing that, that, that concept of providing bridgeheads like like in every mature local community we do want people who can act as a proxy between local language contributors and the the english language global teams so let me give you an example if there is um if the the community team is in need for somebody to do design for the next Mordic conference then may well be that that person is sitting somewhere in some remote country and is not good in English. Uh, but if, if the, our proxy person could take that need to that person and answer questions and, and uh, provides a, a certain channel of communication, then, then all of a sudden that remote person is enabled to be part of a global community. And it's it's... I mean, I'm, I'm still blown away of how widespread the Mordic community is. It, it is, I've not seen a single open source community yet that is uh, present in so many countries around the world. And I'm actually, I'm proud of that. And I, I think we already see uh, the tendencies to, to support that even better. Uh, for instance, by doing the Mordic conference, by doing the subtitles, I mean, it was international tracks by doing the subtitles, um, by doing the time zones and all that. That's not easy, but we we love that. We would try, want to embrace it, and those those bridgehead proxies will take that to the next level. Oh, Toby, you're muted. Thank oh, you so you much, AK. I usually forgot that I mute myself. All right, time. thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, so I think this is going to inspire someone to also give back to the multi community and see how we can be able to grow the project and see how we can also be able to help people around the world. All right, thank you so much for your time. This um, I know it's evening here, yeah, and I believe it's also evening in Germany. So, <laughs> okay, all right. So um, there are no more questions, but in case you still want to connect with AK, feel free to join AK in the lounge. Um, it should be on the breakout room three i think so they can easily connect with you there and then maybe talk about any other thing all right thank you so much ak thank you julio thank you so appreciate all right 
All right, so we have one more session. That will be the closing session for today. That will be handled by Ruth. And then we call it a day. Then tomorrow again we meet. All right, I'll be looking forward to meeting you everyone again um, tomorrow. All right, bye for now. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.